Um, just out of curiosity, how many of you are here for the very first time tonight by a show of hands? Oh yeah, look at all these first timers in the room. That's awesome, I love to see it. Um, well welcome first timers and uh, to you returning attendees. Let me give you a little bit of a background uh, on the Bob Stop and what we do here. The original Bob Stop was privately owned and was established in the early 90s located on the East 40th in St. Clair. And then in the mid 90s it moved to a spot on West 6th. And then in the early 2000s, this fine listening room establishment was built from the ground up, uh, specifically to be a jazz venue. It was the first venue of its kind in Cleveland to be built from the ground up to be a jazz venue. Um, and the original owners owned it through the, uh, the rest of the decade, and they decided around 2011 or so to close down the Bob Stop and put it up for sale. Uh, but then after a short time, they decided instead of selling the Bob Stop, they were going to donate the Bob Stop. So they donated this entire facility to the music settlement. Music Settlement is a 111 year old community music program right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, it's one of the oldest community music programs in the country, uh, with everything from early childhood programs to music lessons and ensembles to music therapy. So, a little bit of something for everyone at the Music Settlement. So, check them out at themusicsettlement.org. And we are, of course, the fourth branch of the Music Settlement now. Uh, and one of the cool things about being part of a nonprofit uh, and having a bar is that we get to serve you tasty drinks while you listen to your music. Uh, and not only do you get to drink while listening to your music, but all the proceeds from the bar go into the operating budget of the music settlement, uh, funding things like scholarships and, uh, uh, and having us bring you great programming here, uh, like tonight's concert. So when you're drinking tonight, you're not only supporting live music, but you're also supporting education, music education in Cleveland. You're drinking for the kids, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> appreciate it, the kids appreciate it, and their parents appreciate those scholarships, so uh, we're grateful that you're here. Uh, our kitchen, we've, uh, we started a, a kitchen partnership a couple of months ago with Edwin's, um, and we've been kind of tweaking this, uh, tweaking the menu and trying to find some things that work. Basically, we've got kind of an Edwin's grab-and-go style menu where they prepare a thing uh, at their site, and they bring it over here, and we plate it and serve it when you order it. Um, and uh, so yeah, so it's uh, it's been an, an interesting, nice change. So we don't actually have anyone back there in the kitchen. Uh, it's uh, myself or Darren or uh, Pam behind the bar, uh, running back there and getting you your food. And let's give it up for Pam behind the bar. Uh, she works really hard to make your drinks extra special tasty. Um, so uh, make sure you tip her well. Um, and so thank you for uh, joining us for, for the food, the drink, um, and of course some of you are not here with us, you're joining us via live stream, so thank you to those of you who are tuning in via live stream. If you like what you hear uh, and you would like to support the band tonight, you can donate on the ticketing page for this event, we'll share the link for that throughout the evening. Uh, there's a donation live stream attendee option on the, uh, on the ticketing page. And those uh, proceeds directly support the band as well. And if anyone in house would like to directly support the Bop Stop and the music settlement and what we do, we do have a donation jar at the door. Uh, so we appreciate uh, your uh, your generosity in advance. Uh, if uh, if you are so inclined to and or moved to support what we do, um, but you're here, you're tuning in. That's the most important thing. You're helping support. Uh, what these musicians are creating. So, without further ado, please welcome to the stage Ricardo Morales Vivero.
is a song that I actually wrote right out of college and I did not have like a title in mind. Uh, the title came later and it seemed fitting for uh, the record because uh, looking within I guess was uh, the theme for me trying to put together all of the musical influences that I've had so far in one way or another so uh, even though this uh, song didn't necessarily come out of that I just like the name and uh, that's why that's uh, the title track for the album now we're going to uh, call Ronell Regis on stage uh, for our next song Introduce uh, the band. We have Grant Heinemann on keys. <laughs> we have Cliff Reed on bass. And we have Anthony Tadeo on drums. <laughs> Anthony was uh, named the godfather for this record, not by me, <laughs> but by the press, and I, you know. I guess fitting title, because <laughs> uh, Anthony was one of the first people that I uh, got to talk to when I moved to Cleveland. Uh, Grace and I moved about a year ago, and he was just very welcoming. And he asked me what I wanted to do here in Cleveland as a new musician, and I had been uh, wanting to record something. Uh, so I told him, "Yeah, I, I do want to go into the studio, but it seemed like something that might take a little bit longer than it actually did." And it just uh, things worked out the way that they did, and now the record is out, but uh, yeah, Anthony really helped me out putting the band together and everything, so he deserves a lot of uh, The next tune we're going to play is uh, Blue and Green, and uh, this tune has a chacarera, sort of 3 over 2 vibe, uh, it's common in a lot of Latin American music, but uh, that was just the one that uh, specific genre that came to mind, which is an Argentinian one, but uh, yeah, blue and green.
Give it up for Ronell. This next tune is uh, the first jazz tune that I ever learned um, back in Ecuador when I uh, we had like the first uh, jazz combo lesson that I took. They uh, brought Equinox, which is a minor blues by John Coltrane. And I feel like it's a tune that doesn't get played that much. I don't know if maybe it's just, uh, you know, like kind of a simple tune that sometimes uh, like a beginner combo we were, uh, would be playing. But um, I had very little exposure to jazz up to that point. But after I heard that tune, I knew that as at least Coltrane, I would uh, forever love and I still do. So I was... Uh, very happy to include this one on the record and uh, we've uh, changed it up a little bit but I hope that it still retains that uh, Coltrane vibe and uh, when putting the, the band together uh, I was very happy that Ronell accepted to play uh, he's a player that has so much energy and can really live up to uh, you know I, that sort of vibe in these tunes so I think that both on the record and live like you can see it sounds, it sounds great so I think it was a great choice
Blackford, come up on stage. Grace not only will be singing the song which I wrote, and she does, you know, such an amazing job as a vocalist, but she also writes some beautiful lyrics, and she wrote the lyrics for this song. So she really, you know, made it what it is. She, she is as much, I guess, composer of the song as I am. So it's our tune, basically, I'm trying to say. And also a little bit of Roman's tune. Roman is in the audience here tonight, and uh, Dr. Roman. Uh, we were in a band in college called Radioactive Geese, and that was where the song premiered many years ago. Uh, yeah, the band doesn't know this. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and Roman was the person that arranged and did a lot of things for that band, so he let me bring in this tune, and then uh, we kind of put together an arrangement that had horns and a lot of stuff, but we're doing a more stripped down version of that tonight.
Give it up for Grace Clapton. Yeah. Also, want to get a sh shout out to Kip Reed on the bass over here. Yeah. It's really a, a privilege to be able to have a very experienced musician like Kip on the bass tonight. Uh, Anthony suggested Kip, and after I saw him playing with Camila Mesa here at the Bob Stop. I was absolutely convinced and really hoping that he would say yes, so I was very excited when Kip was down to play and he's really been the voice of reason throughout a lot of it. I mean, and we want to keep going on the solos, no, 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 he keeps us in line and I, I, I joke, but really it's, it's good to have someone that's been around for so long, especially having a background in music, in music, in life. He has a, a lot of experience with Brazilian music. He's played with a lot of really good Brazilian um, musicians, and this song just borrows a little bit from that, so I really think that Kip really made it come together. So thanks, Kip. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you also heard from Grant here, which... Yeah. He's been quietly sitting over there, but... He's been playing some stuff tonight on the record that he may not say much, but he's playing so much. And um, Greg, I feel like, always knows exactly what the song needs in terms of whether that's comping or even arranging, because he helped us arrange a lot of these tunes. So, um, yeah, thanks, Grant. It's been great having you. All right, and I'm going to give them a little break for one song right now. I'm gonna do a short solo guitar. I told them they didn't have to leave with it. Oh, they, they want to leave. <laughs> so this tune is called Sabor a Mi, which is uh, pretty much what you would equate to standard in Latin American music. It was written by Álvaro Carrillo, and it's a beautiful bolero uh, that has been played many, many times. You've uh, most likely heard it. And uh, it has some beautiful lyrics, but I do think that the lyrics have a little bit of room for uh, interpretation. And when I was listening to them one time, I sort of got the impression that um, they almost have like a little bit of a darker side. It's about love after death, I think that's how I see it. And you can't quite tell who the narrator necessarily is, the person that's alive, the person that's dead. dead. Um, and, uh, you know, even the title, Taste of Me, and saying you will carry that into your death, or, you know, it can be seen in, in a couple different ways. So uh, I thought I'd reinterpret it a little bit in a, a darker way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
guitar. I need a, a quick guitar change. We're getting into the heavy stuff now. JK. JK, JK. So we are actually not that's not joking, but we are moving on to the second half of the record and uh, I mentioned how I have been writing sort of with different influences in mind and I do think this part is pulling a little bit more towards the uh, like rock influences that I have or other sort of, you know, straight A music. And um, this song in particular, West Boulevard, I wrote about a year ago, maybe a little less, uh, but it was shortly after moving to Cleveland and um, the song is about that feeling that you get when you're in a in a new point in your life, I guess you could say. It doesn't have to be a new place necessarily, but it definitely felt like um, we were moving into something new that was very cool, uh, very beautiful. We were meeting a lot of great people, but uh, you can't uh, forget also sort of that you're moving on with life in, in different ways and there's always things that you leave behind, even when it's uh, something positive. So I guess there was a little bit of sadness in a way too, and I do feel about the record that way too, because this whole process of putting it together and bringing it to life is pretty much done after this, and I know that there's a new life for the record after, but there's always a little bit of sadness in, in that process, I think.
Thank you.
Miguel Ronell one more time. What a treat. <laughs> this tune is uh, a simple tune. kind of has like two chords-ish, sort of, uh, and as opposed to some of the other tunes from the night. Uh, and for this one in particular, definitely leaning into sort of those rock influences, but also I love uh, the Chris Potter group. Um, from Follow the Red Line, which is a very funk-oriented group, and uh, that one, it is your favorite record. You know, no, my favorite record. Too. Okay. We can say that tonight at least. Um, so yeah, I love, I love that uh, band, and it's just you know kind of trying to get into that a little bit. Take two.
wrote the tune, I'm pretty sure, well, even though they released it as a band, but I'm pretty sure he, he wrote it in. This one, again, I like uh, not just the music, it is a beautiful song, but uh, the lyrics are really cool, too. So, they're in Spanish, you gotta go check them out. <laughs> Translate if you need to, but... Yeah, unfortunately, we uh, don't have the lyrics for this one, but it's still a really cool tune. So, again, thanks so much uh, to the Bob Stop for having us. This yeah. venue is amazing. Thank you very much. And thanks so much to the amazing band that was here with me uh, tonight. Chris Blackford, Ronald, Regis, Anthony, and and one more thing actually, tonight uh, this was a very special show for uh, many reasons, but uh, my parents were able to come from Ecuador to see the show. It's nice that they live stream this because my family doesn't get to see most of the shows that I play. So hopefully everything will went well with the live stream and they're they're watching this. Uh, and buy the album. Oh yeah, we have some CDs here. If people are still interested in CDs. We do have CDs available. So come down there. I'll, I'll be over there and uh, I can sell you one. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is a uh,